in the space, landing rockets on boats, and remaking the global aerospace industry. But those achievements pale next to the audacity of trying to send humans to Mars, which remains far beyond the present-day capability of NASA or any other space agency around the world. Even with an annual budget approaching $25 billion a year and some of the smartest scientists and engineers anywhere, the space agency that landed humans on the moon remains several giant leaps away from sending a few astronauts to Mars. Musk wants to build a city there. Perhaps it is better to say something inside Musk relentlessly drives him to do this. He long ago decided that for humanity to have a long-term future, it must expand to other worlds, with Mars offering the best place to start. This is extremely hard because space is an insanely dangerous place, permeated by radiation and with certain death always lurking on the other side of thin, pressurized walls. The amount of water, food, fuel, and clothing needed to sustain a months-long outbound mission to Mars is astounding. And once there, people must actually have somewhere to survive on the surface. The largest object NASA has ever sent to the surface of Mars, the Perseverance rover, weighs about one ton. A single small human mission would probably require 50 times the mass. For a sustainable human settlement, Musk thinks he probably needs to ship one million tons to Mars. This is why he is building the massive reusable Starship vehicle in Texas. In many ways, SpaceX is vastly different today from the company Musk started long ago, but in important ways, it remains exactly the same. With the Starship project, SpaceX has returned to its earliest scrappy days when it strove to build the Falcon 1 rocket against all odds. Then, as now, Musk pushed his employees relentlessly to move fast, to innovate, to test, and to fly. The DNA of the earliest days of the Falcon 1 rocket lives on in South Texas today at the Starship factory. And a huge photo of a Falcon 1 launch hangs in the wall of Musk's personal conference room at the company's headquarters in California. To understand SpaceX, where it aspires to go, and why it just might succeed, one must voyage back to the Falcon 1 rocket and dig up the roots. The seeds for everything SpaceX has grown into today were planted during the early days of the Falcon 1 program by Musk. Back then, he sought to build the world's first low-cost orbital rocket. All of the aspirational talk about Mars would mean nothing if SpaceX could not put a relatively simple rocket like the Falcon 1 into orbit. And so, with a burning intensity, he pressed toward that goal. SpaceX began with nothing but an empty factory and a handful of employees. This small group launched its first rocket less than four years later and reached orbit in six. The story of how SpaceX survived those lean early years is a remarkable one. Many of the same people who made the Falcon 1 remain at SpaceX today. Some have moved on, but all have stories about those early formative years that remain mostly untold. The men and women who helped Musk bring SpaceX through its darkest days hailed from farm country in California, from the suburbs of the Midwest, from East Coast cities, from Lebanon, Turkey, and Germany. Musk hired them all, molded them into a team, and coaxed them to do the nearly impossible. Their path to orbit led from the United States to a small tropical island about as far from a continental landmass as one can get on this world. And out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the company very nearly died multiple times. More than a decade later, Musk and SpaceX have traversed the chasm separating failure and success. After perusing Starhopper at sunset, he spent several hours touring his rocket shipyard in South Texas. Through the night, as a full moon rose, Employees banged and welded and hefted a full-sized starship prototype from rolls of stainless steel. 
The hour had reached near midnight when he and his boys emerged from a construction.